This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, the online therapy platform. Something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Balancing life with regularly programmed sinning can be overwhelming at times, but with the help of a professional therapist, I get the clarity I need to sort through and see the next goalpost. I know starting therapy can be a challenge between the time commitment and finding someone local to you, but that's where BetterHelp comes in. They understand that everyone has their own comfort zone and offer therapy sessions via phone calls, video chats, or even messaging. Whatever suits you. They also make it easy. Fill out their questionnaire, and in just a few days, you could be matched with a professional therapist who aligns with your needs. With BetterHelp, you can overcome the barriers that might be holding you back from seeking help. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. Using that link not only supports this channel, but also gives you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. I guess Michael Sarah did an hour long dance or some shit to the DVD menu of all those DVDs that we no longer watch. And much like the flip phones in this movie, I'm guessing all of you born after 2007 have no idea what I'm talking about. So the sin is making me hour long for a simpler time. Also, no amount of silhouetted salsa bullshit will justify one minute and 26 and a half seconds of opening credits. Put the milk back in the fridge, you waste of penile secretion. The Fantastic Voyage is the one where they find like random girls on the street and they invite them into a van and then they bang them once they're on the van. Naming this very specific porn site Tastic Voyage instead of Jean Broad Van Slammed. I don't know what I'm going to be into 10 years from now. 10 years from now, you'll be shockingly surprised at the amount of free porn you'll be able to access and likely have canceled this subscription. Guess the sin here is hindsight always being better than porn site. If I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value. Well, I'm sorry, Evan, that the Coen brothers don't direct the porn that I watched. But would you really want them to? You'd almost never get a happy ending. Plus, your parents are going to be looking at the bill, dipsh**. Yeah, you're right. I probably should pick the one with the least dirty sounding name. I see the logic, but believe me, parents aren't giving teenagers the benefit of the doubt on basically anything, but especially not credit card transactions with a witty title. Evan told me you didn't get into Dartmouth. You gonna miss each other? I can't believe it took until 2007 to make a movie about two high school friends struggling with not getting into the same college and reconciling how that will affect their friendship. You'd think by the mid-aughts this would have been covered again and again and again and again. Mine so much that people end up making sarcastic jokes about how much it hadn't been covered. I am truly jealous you got to suck on those when you were a baby. Yeah, well, at least you got to suck on your dad's Incest competitions. Seth, what are you, you can't park in the faculty lot. Don't be such a vagina, man. I gotta get a Red Bull before class. If using the faculty lot is the best and quickest way for a student to get an energy drink, then someone is missing out on a huge gap in the lazy student who's late to class and thinks an energy drink will rescue their shitty grades market. Which, by the way, is 98% of students. Look at those nipples. They're like little baby toes. This movie is the reason these two sentences exist back to back. I flip my up into my waistband. It hides it and it feels awesome. I almost blew a load into my belly button. It does not feel awesome. Or so I've heard. Also, Richard Pryor's expression sums up exactly how I feel about this entire conversation and these characters and this movie. You know, it's been like two years since I've seen an actual human female nipple. I understand what he's going for, but why did he have to specify human? You got like two dozen hand jobs. Yes, and three quarters of blow Not clarifying whether the two thirds is referring to consumption or duration. Well, you'll have sex in college. Everyone does. This memo that never made it to my college girlfriend. You don't want girls thinking that you suck and put This memo that did make it to my college girlfriend. I'm not trying to insult her. I'm just saying that she looks like a good f***er, okay? Knowing that you're doing or saying a thing you shouldn't, but doing it anyway, is so ingrained in this character that from now on, I will just refer to it as Sethic. You can do to Seth whatever you want, but you do not spit on Richard Pryor, you asshole. Tell your f***ing friend he can't come either. It's only been 16 years since this movie came out, and plenty of people really used to talk like this all the time. It was completely unacceptable, but for the most part, we didn't do anything about it. Some may ask, should a movie receive a sin on behalf of society? And all I can say is that this one sure as hell will. Jonah Hill can't run far without running out of breath because he's on the heavier side, and then Paul Blart, Mall Cop, happen and laugh, you peasants, laugh! No wonder teens' body images get so f***ed up when all the films marketed at them have 23-year-old Martha McIsaac playing 18-year-olds. If I equals the square root of- Rookie mistake, Evan. See, humans have this awesome thing called peripheral vision. You could have stared straight ahead and just moved your eyeball all the way to the right and stared to your pervy heart's content. Women never spot that, right? 
Watching porn with your friends and acting like no one has a boner is kind of similar to wine tasting. And the movie missed the opportunity to coin the terms porn sewer and semen lier. Some students are just walking into class now and some have already started cooking. What the f*** is up with this school? What are the rules? There's more disorder here than there was in the faculty. Making an alcohol-free sabayon. Come on, Mrs. Hayworth, go hard or go home. Or as the French always tell me, va de fervor. And I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. No one cooks tiramisu. You just fail to make it properly. Jules's partner isn't here today either. Pair up with her. Gasp! Seth just happens to be paired with the girl he was just objectifying. And upon that coincidence, an idea slips through the contraceptive dome of creation, fertilizes the unassuming egg of cinema, and the parturition of a movie is forced upon an unwilling world. Making these turd-shaped cookies did not require four hands. It's funny because he's pretending it's his penis. It's weird because it's so long and thick. Also, none of the students in and around or behind Seth call him out for being a creepy f***ing creepy creepo. We cover it with chocolate. The whole thing. Just dump it on, I'm serious. American cuisine. Gangsters, what's up guys? Fogel would be thrown out eventually, but he's still barged in like a Steve Urkel cliche. Well, you guys are a Dartmouth. I'll be over at State where the girls are half as smart and thus twice as likely to fellache me. Citation needed. That guy's the f***ing anti-poon. If that were the case, the opposite of Fogel would be poon. And by the movie's own logic, that would also be an insult. I would do terrible, disgusting things to hook up with Jules. Unforgivable things. And you will. Give my middle nut to start dating Becca. Seems in the super bad universe, all men have three nuts, which is reminiscent of the woman with the three boobs in Total Recall, which starred Michael Ironside, who had a role in X-Men First Class, which starred Kevin Bacon. For some reason, I don't know why, just kind of sit around all day and draw pictures of dicks. Like a man dick? No, I'm sure he means Dick Turpin, or Dick Whittington, or Dick Van Dyke. Wait, why are all the best dicks British? I just sit there for hours on end drawing dicks. I don't know what it was. It's called a flow state. You had found a medium and subject that spoke to your soul, but because they were too narrow-minded to understand it, the adults in your life snuffed out your creative flame, forcing you to try and fill the gaping hole left behind with alcohol and meaningless sex. It's a tale as old as time. Judging by this outline, this is not the image that this little girl is looking at. Now, I'm glad about that, but it's still a continuity error. We're gonna have to blur quite a bit of this, but take our word for it that the sins are as follows. Robo c Donkey Dong, Tianapin Square, Pippi Long Cocking, Dr. Love Glove. You know how many foods are shaped like d The best kinds. That was not a number, so I have to penalize you for incorrectly answering your own question. She wants to f me. She wants my d in and around her mouth. Sethic. Seth, mom is making a pubie salad and I need some Seth's own dressing. Sethic. P and VG. She wants to f f man. Sethic. Oh, I was so sh face last night. I shouldn't have f***ed that guy. We could be that mistake. Wanting to be that mistake, especially when that mistake can easily lead to the pitter-patter of another much more life-burdening mistake. I'm sitting here with my thumb up my ass. And you're not sitting at all. And even if you were, the thumb part would have been entirely your choice. Now we're never going to bone because of that used tampon Fogel. Calling Fogel a used tampon is not the insult you think it is. It would actually imply that he has completed his assigned task successfully. Why the f*** would it be between that or Muhammad? Why don't you just pick a common name like a normal person? Muhammad is the most commonly used name on Earth. Read a f***ing book. McLovin would be excellent at Americans need to realize there's a world beyond America since. What? What name? What name? Who are you, Seal? Exposing your lack of knowledge about the legend that is Seal, Henry, Ola Sagan, Olamide, Adiola, Samuel, baby! I know that, f***ing I know that! Jesus Christ, does he need to be yelling all the time? Why is Evan friends with Seth? I'm 30 minutes in and I can't f***ing stand it. Why do they make that if you can't even win? Then why, do you, why am I f***ing playing? Assuming there's something wrong with a game instead of resigning yourself to the fact that you're just not good enough and maybe you just don't have the mental fortitude to complete every level of Super Mario Brothers and that summer you spent trying to is just a summer you need to write off to experience and isn't necessarily the reason you can't complete anything. Or uh, whatever Evan was saying. I'm not projecting, you're projecting. Of all the drinks, why would he prioritize the vodka that is apparently going to get Evan some action instead of anything from Jules's list? Uzo, bourbon, spiced rum. Wait. Uzo? What f***ing teenager is asking for Uzo? This sign makes it look like this ATM only dispenses cash as opposed to other things. And do people really get confused about which of these items is the trash bin? I brought a little bottle of spermicidal lube, too. Ew, not even flavored? You know, I, I heard they recently decided to add more hops 
to it. People who drink IPAs. She had the biggest tits I've ever seen, I think. I gotta catch a glimpse of these warlocks. I know that teenagers in particular get distracted by boobs every other minute, but it's still some bullshit that this particular chesticular detour happens at the perfect time for Evan and Seth to miss the shoplifter running into the store and the police arriving to create the whole phone getting arrested misunderstanding. Jonah Hill is only two years younger than Seth Rogen and no amount of handlebar mustaching is gonna fix that. Fogel, he got arrested, okay? We're on our own. Yelling. Fogel, we need a new way to get liquor, which is impossible because we don't have any money. Still yelling. Thinking we need to act. <laughs> Seth survives this and forces us to hear him yelling even more. We arrested a man lady who is legally named What? An Apatow movie from the aught saying something that hasn't aged well? What is this madness? Never have I seen such a thing as what my eyes have just perceived. Why the f wouldn't I report you? You just hit me with your car. Because I'll do anything. Please, okay? Anything. Like, literally? F***ing anything. Despite this golden shower of an opportunity to get all the booze and porn they could hope for, Seth and Evan eventually walk away from this guy with nothing. Instead of dragging his ass to an ATM, they drive away with him to what may very well be his f dungeon, as if that's never gotten anyone killed before. You guys know a guy named Jimmy? You totally look like his brother. This foreshadowing of Evan's uncanny resemblance to Jimmy's brother, whoever the f*** that is, won't even be necessary when we get the call back because we won't remember or care. You guys on MySpace or? For the kids out there, MySpace was kind of like TikTok, but there was no dancing or sea shanties and you weren't cool unless you knew HTML. I often go to sleep and dream of waking up in a world where everything is covered in semen. Ew, even if you're into it, a little goes a long way. Set calls for Manny's Bar and Grill, <laughs> Warp 10. Engage. You dick. The Enterprise never goes warp 10. That way lies madness and salamanders. Is this the accurate depiction of a party or do parties look like this because this is how movies depict them? Did art mimic life into a cliche or did life mimic art into a cliche? Get the booze and get the f out of here, okay? Okay, if they truly believe this is their best route to getting booze, fine. But why are they doing all the legwork? Why don't they just force Creepy Boyle to do the thieving? He hit Seth with a car and his only punishment was to Uber them to a place he was already going. We just grab one of these buckets and get out of here. Other than the fact that that random bucket doesn't have any of the sh jewels ask you to get, yes, great idea. You wanna get killed for liquor? No, but I would get killed for no questions asked. Yeah, but if you get killed before your noble sacrifice gets rewarded, then the is about as much use to you as a bucket full of alcohol no one asked for. He sells me a piece of shit fucking phone. Fucking asshole. I, I think that guy. What happened? Did you just son of a fucking bitch phone company? That's Rude. Hello? This accurate depiction of cell phone reception, if you didn't have Verizon during this time period, sets up an unnecessary drama caused by a misunderstanding storyline that is almost immediately abandoned. Is that blood? Like my college girlfriend used to say, if you have to ask the question, don't touch it. I'm gonna fucking throw up. <laughs> Someone period on my fucking leg? Being more grossed out by period blood than just blood blood. Also, you know, sometimes things can happen in life and sometimes you just don't commit them to film. That is a choice you have. Looks like we got a call. Oh, yeah. We can't pay for these. It's bad enough that they think they can get away with hanging out at a bar while on duty, but now they're not paying either? Way to incentivize the barman to tell on your ass. It's like having two c**ks. Yep. If one of your c**ks could kill someone. I'm pretty sure your actual c**k could kill someone too. I just don't want to specifically imagine how that would work when Scary Movie already did that work for me. These eyes are crying. These eyes have seen a lot of loves, but they're never gonna see another one like I have with you. Sorry, but this sh slaps. Good job. He full arm threw that bottle from like four feet away. This should either be impossible or deadly. I should f***ing kill you, you mother f***ing what? You bled on him. We were supposed to go to college together, Evan. Since we were little kids, since elementary school, that's all we've ever talked about. I'm gonna need a recording, a transcript, and an affidavit because I do not believe you. Instead of chasing girls and making friends, I've just sat around wasting all my time with you. And now because of you, I'm going to college a f***ing friendless virgin. Everything they're saying here feels like it all got reversed. Evan was the one being super chill about the girls and the whole getting laid thing, but now that's all he cares about? Is this about Becca? Is this about some girl, man? Seriously, Seth was the one all about sex parties before, and now he cares more about friendship. Are we in a new timeline? F*** you, Evan. Touch me. That car snuck up on them even though it was traveling slow enough to not send Seth to the hospital. We're gonna arrest these two little dipshits. Okay, we're, we're, we're gonna pin it on them. This nearly works. Probably more often than we should be okay with. Stop the bus! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> this might be the most ridiculous part of the whole movie. <laughs> the bus actually stopped for them. Hey! 
It's you! Oh, and now they've managed to find themselves on the same bus as the abusive bar guy from earlier? Jesus, this movie should be called Super Unlikely String of Coincidences that managed to turn out basically okay in the end. Bad. You two fans can talk about it next year at your little slumber party. Oh, you told him. You told me what? Yeah. An idiot, Fogel. He's not an idiot. That statement sounds very much like Seth knew they were going to be roommates. That is only not true because of the script. Slow motion walk of victory cliche. And please believe me when I say that I'm using victory in the absolute loosest of possible terms. She told you that she thinks I'm a good guy? No, no. She said something more like, I will fully blow him tonight. With lines like these, it's hard to believe that this movie passed the Bechdel test. But she's totally hammered, and if I get with her and I'm not drunk, isn't that, like, unethical? Yes, one might say it would be a super bad idea. And a crime. Vogel. Sup. This works. All the people at this party survived the precursor to the Tide Pod Challenge. Just be careful, because it's a meaningful sweater and it means vintage. Movie robs Evan of the rite of passage that is the loss or irreparable damage of your favorite sweater by a love interest. Come on, McLevin. I've never been with an older guy before. How does she not know who he is? They go to the same school and she literally looked at him in the hall today. I know, we made some kick-ass tiramisu earlier. You did not. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's wrong? Well, it's mainly that your mouth tastes like beer mixed with detergent and your leg smells like menstruation. I would prefer if we would just do that at, um, at some other time. No, there's no other... Time school's up. Yep, because there's no possible way two people could meet up with each other outside of a school. If you don't find your soulmate at school, you're basically screwed. Or not. I empathize with the teenage boy's condition having suffered through the embarrassment of being one, but still, f*** Seth. The movie made him a total ass for an hour and a half, and it thinks this rejection sending him on the road to redemption is enough to chalk it all up to lessons learned. Movies in the 2000s certainly had some balls on them. It was such a smooth... Thank you, you would too if you were a man. Is any of this a compliment? I got a boner. <laughs> Good. See, what happened here is that Fogel became more than just a man. He devoted himself to the ideal of McLovin. An ideal that puts sheer badassery before everything else. And that, ladies and germs, is why he is the only one who wins the day in a consensual and mostly non-problematic way. He truly is the hero this movie deserved, but not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him. Wait, what am I talking about? I think maybe... Honestly, Jules takes that full frontal sethening like a champ, but she should have really tried blocking him with her hands instead of her eye socket. You're back there. Get out. Everyone. The worst cops in America, well, the worst cops on this block at least, still somehow managed to deduce that this party is the party that Seth, Evan, and Fogel are at. I assume you all have guns and crack. Officer Michaels' voice is doing that weird thing that happens in movies where it only seems to be heard by the people within a two-foot radius of him, considering none of the kids in this room appear to be running away or panicking. Prepare to be f***ed by the long f*** of the law! If you told me this entire thing was written by two 13-year-olds, and that those two 13-year-olds would grow up to be very proud of themselves, I would believe you. Just a whole f***ing shit ton of lampid bukkaka lampening all over this room. Just block McLovin. For obvious reasons, that is a sin. We should be guiding his for obvious reasons, that is a sin. Holy s***, Fogel's a badass. Well, I'll be damned. They brought that kid that almost got s*** on in sex drive into this. Oh, well, we caught the infamous Fogel. Get your head. Wait for me, Nicola. We were going to go to Hawaii. Nicola doesn't at all seem to be alarmed that McLovin isn't McLovin. That is, in fact, Fogel. So by signing this, you are officially saying that as we stopped you from being mugged, a crackhead stole our cruiser and did God knows what with it. But don't they also have to explain why their guns have been fired? Please let that be a thing that has to be tracked. Also, that doesn't explain how unlikely it is that the guy who witnessed a robbery earlier was also rescued from a mugging on the same day by the same two cops. It's too bad the movie is only now realizing that Fogel was the main character all along. I love you. I'm not even embarrassed to say it. I just... I love you. To be fair, your metric for being embarrassed has likely been radically altered by tonight's events. Like when you went away for Easter on your vacation, I missed you. Skip. I should be getting a move on for sure. He slept in the bloody pants. I mean, the pants with blood on them. I'm not turning British, I promise. Yeah, but I'm doing like, I'm doing like college poses, like. This movie could have wrapped up in 90 minutes if it wasn't wasting time on sh like this. Yeah, man, they go nuts for that male camel toe. I reiterate, this movie could have wrapped in 90 minutes if it wasn't wasting time on like this. And I'm gonna get Jules a new comforter. Oh, I have to get a comforter too. Look at that, a completely seamless way for these two people to spend time together seamlessly. Hooray for convenient third act meet cutes. 
Evan and Becca may deserve another shot, and I'm pretty sure Jules deserves some sort of legal restitution, but Seth? Seth deserves nothing. This door clearly has enough room for Jack and Rose. Alcohol is very, very bad for children. Gangsters. Yo, what's up with my niggas, man? Thanks for taking him, Seth. It's a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what did I say, nipple? Where's all this stolen liquor, Danny Ocean? You hide up your butt? <laughs> because a house always wins. Play long enough, you never change the stakes. The house takes you. Killing me won't get you alcohol, jerk off. I'm the one with the fake ID. Here's what we do. I go into the face-off machine, get a whole new face. I turn up, they never know it's me. Marshall Mathers, Eminem, the rapper Eminem. He doesn't like spaghetti. Bullets over Broadway was on TV. I came down with a big old Diane Weist infection. Like yeast. This kid's got period oh, blood on his side. I read somewhere that their periods attract bears. The bears can smell the menstruation. I feel like a like a slice of butter melting on top of a big old pile of flapjacks. Uh, you don't have to tell me that. It's like having two. C yep. If one of your c could kill someone. <laughs> can, can I hold one? What? I want what I want, and you know what I want. Don't you betray the law. Okay? Now hold hands. Have you ever fired your gun up in the air and gone, ah? No, I have not ever fired my gun up in the air and gone, ah. I want you to know I don't want to live with Fogel. I don't want a super fella. You know about him. He wets the bed. 